Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be going over a poll here from Emerson Polling, taking a look at the state of Iowa in those 2020 Democratic caucus numbers. And then after that, we're also going to take a look at those 2020 general election numbers for the state of Iowa. But starting off here, the top two performers continue to be Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. You see Joe Biden at the top here at 25 percentage points. Bernie Sanders neck and neck with Biden. He's at 24 percentage points. But the big surprise here is Mayor Pete Buttigieg moving into third place at 11 percent of the vote. Now, I expected Mayor Pete to get a bump in his polling, considering that he's had some very strong and positive appearances on national television recently. His performance on The View, very strong. Also, what he did with his CNN town hall, again, a very positive sign for him and a strong showing. He's also been getting some more press, getting his name and message out there more. And it's having an effect, at least in this particular poll, where he comes in in third place at 11%. Now, again, this is just one marker. It might be a blip for him or it might be a trend. We're going to have to see how that plays out for Mayor Pete in the coming days and weeks as we get more polls that come out. But also specifically in a state like Iowa, I think that Pete Buttigieg can perform very well given how his demographics line up with a state like Iowa a younger white male, and he wears his Christianity on his sleeve, but he does so in more of an inclusive way than what you might get on the Republican side, for instance, because you don't want to alienate voters on the Democratic side, much more diverse pool of voters with the Democratic primary and caucus goers, a lot of people that aren't religious or might have a religion that isn't Christianity. So I think Pete Buttigieg is doing a very smart thing in terms of trying to bring along those Democratic Christians, but he's also doing it in a way where I don't think he's alienating those other voters as well. So his strategy has been playing out pretty well up to this point, considering he was only getting a trace amount of the results in these polls and now coming up into third place at 11 percentage points. And again, this might just be a blip more so than a trend, and we're going to have to see how that play is out for Mayor Pete in future polling numbers. Now, moving into fourth place here, we have Kamala Harris at 10 percentage points, Elizabeth Warren in fifth at nine percentage points, Cory Booker in sixth at six percentage points. And this is a disappointment from Beto O'Rourke, given the fact that this poll was taken after he had already made his announcement that he was running in seventh place at five percentage points. And then we have Amy Klobuchar, another very disappointing result for her, given the fact that Iowa geographically is very close to the state where she's a senator from in Minnesota. And if Amy Klobuchar isn't doing well in the Midwest in states that are similar in demographics to Minnesota, it's just not a positive sign for her chances at going on and winning the nomination. And then we have Hickenlooper at one percentage point, Tulsi Gabbard at one percentage point, Julian Castro and Jay Inslee as well at one percentage point. And then Kirsten Gillibrand, another very poor performance from her. And it just seems like Gillibrand in particular of all of the more establishment type up and comers, young people that have decided to come out. And when I say young, I mean relatively young people to decide to run such as Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Beto O'Rourke, she seems to be the consistent worst performer in that crop of politicians at 0%. Again, not a great result for her in this one. And then Andrew Yang at 0% and someone else at four percentage points. So now I want to go down and just go over again. There's a big generational divide within the Democratic Party, and we continue to see this in poll after poll where Bernie Sanders maintains strong support amongst younger voters between 18 to 29. He has 44 percent of support there. But this is also where Pete Buttigieg is making gains here at 22 percent. And then we move on where Biden leads among all other age groups. He has 32 percent of the 30 to 49 year olds, 29 percent of the 50 to 64 year olds and 31 percent of those that are 64 years or above. So now moving down and taking a look at those general election numbers. And it's a mixed bag here for the Democrats. So again, this is something that we've been consistently seeing. Now we're getting a much stronger sample size here in this general election poll compared to what we had in that Democratic caucus poll. This one is at 707, so a bit of a smaller margin of error. Biden, in these head-to-head -head matchups against Trump, he tends to do the best out of all these Democratic candidates. In the state of Iowa, he has a six-point lead in this Emerson poll. Bernie Sanders, a two-point lead over Donald Trump. Elizabeth Warren losing by two percentage points to Donald Trump. Cory Booker down by four percentage points. And then Kamala Harris down eight percentage points, 46 to 54. And again, I think that some of this has to do with the demographics of the state of Iowa, a very white population. I think that candidates like Sanders and Biden would do better in general in a state like Iowa than perhaps Booker and Harris. But also on top of that, you have to factor in the stronger name recognition of those candidates as well, which is also, I think, in play here. And 
a more positive sign for Sanders and Biden at this early point in time, given their overwhelming name recognition. And if the Democrats go on and win the state of Iowa in 2020, that would bode very well for their chances of winning the presidency, given the fact that if they win Iowa, that almost certainly means that they're going to win states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which in general are a bit more Democratic leaning than Iowa. So that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Subscribe for more poll analysis in the future, and I hope to see you guys back here for my next video.